Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about Lagrange multipliers. Um, specifically, we'll have a two variable, um, one constraint scenario. So it'll be f of xy equals xy, and then our constraint will be 4x squared plus 8y squared equals 16. Um, so let's see what we need to know to be able to do this. So the first thing you need to know is you need to have a function that you want to optimize. In this case, it'll be f of xy. We also need to have a constraint curve which is gonna be g of x, y, which is gonna be set equal to zero, which some people worry about, but that just means move everything to one side, call it g of x, y, and then set it equal to zero. So um, that involves just moving everything. Usually it's a constant that you move over, but uh, we'll see. Uh, then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna solve the system. So the system is gonna look like uh, the gradient of f equals lambda times the gradient of g and g of x, y equals zero. So if you think about it, and I think this is the part where people get a little confused, uh, there's actually three variables there. It's x, y, and lambda. And we're going to have three equations in three unknowns. So where are those equations gonna come from? Well, we're gonna have partial x uh, of f. f partial x um, is equal to lambda times uh, partial x of g and then partial y of f is gonna equal lambda times partial y of g. And then also, finally, we'll have g of x, y equals zero. And so that last equation comes in at the end. Um, so let's actually do the example and we'll kind of see how it goes. So f of x, y is equal to x times y, such that four x squared plus eight y squared equals 16. Okay, so uh, we're not explicitly given a g of x, y. So let's uh, work that out. So I'm gonna move uh, the 16 over and get g of x, y is 4x squared plus 8y squared minus 16. And then I need, uh, I just, since I moved the 16 over, uh, g of x, y is definitely equal to zero. So that's where our constraint curve comes from. And now we're just gonna go through the process. So first step is we need to find the gradients. So really like my first and second steps you could combine once you've done a couple of these, but I'm gonna find the gradient. So the gradient of f is going to be um, partial x of xy, which is just gonna equal y, and then partial y of xy is just gonna equal x. Okay, so we got the gradient of f. Now we need the gradient of g. So the gradient of g is going to be equal to partial x of this thing. So it's four x squared plus eight y squared minus 16. Um, only 4x squared has an x in it, so partial x is going to be 8x, everything else goes to zero. Partial y is kind of the same deal. Uh, the only thing that has a y in it is 8y squared, so partial y will be 16y. All right, and now we wanna set it up. So think it through, right? It's the gradient of f equals lambda times uh, the gradient of g, and g of xy equals zero. So that's our, our kind of system of equations. So I'm gonna write that down. And then I'm gonna actually kind of write the system, right? So, all right, so partial x of f is y, and partial x of g is 8x. So uh, y is equal to lambda times 8x. And then we go through and do that again. So partial uh, y of f is um, x, and partial y of g is 16y, so it's x equals lambda times 16y. And then we also have, uh, I tend to just like rearrange it and go back to the original constraint curve, uh, 4x squared plus 8y squared equals 16. All right, so now we just need to solve this system, which uh, typically these systems are like nonlinear, and uh, if you go way back to when you took algebra or algebra two, you probably didn't solve a lot of these. Um, you just kind of like go about it however you can. I find that more often than not, your first step is going to be uh, take all the things that have lambda in them, set them equal to lambda, and then by transitivity, set them equal to each other, and then go from there. So that's what I'm actually gonna do. So I'm gonna combine these. I'm gonna look at it as this system, where I just wanna solve for lambda. So for the first part, uh, lambda is just y over eight x. Uh, from the second part, lambda is just x over 16 y. And since those are both equal to lambda, they're equal to each other. So y over eight x equals x over 16 y. And then uh, if you, you get 16 y squared equals eight x squared. 
uh, divide by x and you'll get 2y squared equals x squared. Okay, so this is a relationship between x and y um, that I can use with my third equation for my system. So I have this third equation, 4x squared plus 8y squared equals 16. So I'm going to replace every x squared that I see with 2y squared. So 4 times 2y squared, 8 times y squared equals 16. So that's 8y uh, squared plus 8y squared is 16y squared equals 16. So y squared equals 1. So y is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, so now I know that y is equal to plus or minus 1. So let's see. I need to find the x values that, goes with, that go with each of those. So I can use this relationship. 2y squared equals x squared. All right, so if y is equal to positive 1, then um, x squared is equal to 2 times positive 1 squared. So x squared equals 2, which means that x is plus or minus radical 2. So when y is 1, there are actually two ordered pairs. So the points that I get are um, radical 2 comma 1 and negative radical 2 comma 1. The saddest mistake you can make at this point is to switch x and y. I see people do it kind of a lot. Um, so we get two points when y is equal to 1, and now we'll just do it when y is negative 1. If y is equal to negative 1, use the same relationship, we'll get x squared um, is 2 times the quantity negative 1 squared, and you can see we're going to get the same thing. So x squared is 2, x is going to be plus or minus radical 2 again. So we get two more points. So we get radical 2, negative 1, and negative radical 2, negative 1. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to take the four points that we found and we're just going to test them in f of x, y. So uh, one of those, or like there will be a biggest value that we get and a smallest value that we get. And that'll be the absolute max and the absolute min. So let's see. Um, we're going to test. Uh, because of the way f of x, y works, it's just x times y. That means if x, if the x coordinate and y coordinate have the same sign, we'll get the same value. So positive, positive, and negative, negative give the same result. So I'm just going to do them both at the same time. So f of root 2 comma 1 is equal to f of negative root 2 comma negative 1. And both of those are equal to root 2 times 1, so just root 2. And then the same is true if uh, x and y have opposite signs. So I'm going to do both of those at the same time. So f of negative root 2, 1 is equal to f of root 2, negative 1, and both of those are negative root 2. Okay, so one of these is the biggest value you could possibly get, and one of them is the smallest value you could possibly get. So this one must be the maximum. So for the function f of x, y equals x times y, the largest value you could possibly get such that 4x squared plus 8y squared equals 16 is radical 2. So um, if you use like GeoGebra or something, you can actually like model this situation and see that that's happening. Graph f of xy is equal to x times y. Graph 4x squared plus 8y squared equals 16, which is actually like an elliptical cylinder. Um, and you'll see that the intersection, the biggest you could get occurs at one point, or well, two points. It's at root two, one, and negative root two, negative one. And the height there is radical two. And then the smallest value, similarly, is negative root 2. Alright, so that's what we're doing. That's Lagrange multipliers. Um, I hope this was helpful and good luck.